uh, everyone wants a quick answer. You know, you get, give me the three foods to eat and the one food not to eat. I do have a simple answer, and it is, it depends. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Thrive Stayed Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. V, Triple Board MD, and longevity and performance expert. And on this podcast, we're going to dive in a little bit about how to make your skin radiant. Now, if you're a first time to this podcast, welcome in. Uh, for those who have been joining the podcast now for two years, thank you for making this podcast such a success. Uh, remember, if you haven't picked up a copy of my book yet, you might want to wait for two months when we will be re-releasing a new edition of Thrive State, your blueprint for optimal health, longevity, and peak performance. For those of you that have gotten a lot of value from this podcast, please leave us a five-star review wherever podcasts are heard. That's going to help the show grow. Now, today is all about radiant skin, and it's not just what we use in our skin, but how do we live life? can actually determine our skin health. And today's guest is actually Dr. Mark Tager. He's the healthcare synergist and a leading expert in the skincare space. Now, Dr. Mark Tager is actually a pioneer in integrative medicine. He founded the Institute of Preventative Medicine in Portland back in 1976. While in Oregon, Dr. Tager produced a weekly radio show and wrote a wellness column for the Oregon Journal and the Seattle Times. Dr. Tager is actually the author of 10 best-selling books, including his latest book, Feed Your Skin Right, Your Personalized Nutrition Plan for Radiant Beauty. So stay tuned, find out what you need to do to keep your skin radiant on this episode of the Thrive State Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy this conversation with Dr. Mark Tager. All right, welcome back to another edition, special edition of the Thrive State Podcast. I'm actually here with one of my mentors. Uh, we're here at the A4M, which is the Anti-Aging Conference World Congress, the largest one in the world. And welcome to the Thrive State Podcast. My pleasure to be here again. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. Uh, Dr. Tager has actually helped me uh, create a keynote um, uh, just a couple of years ago. So some of you see me on stage and thank you for some of his work. Well, you are always powerful and we just tuned you up just a little bit. So it's a great message, the message of thriving and uh, love the work that you do. Now, before we get into the book and some of the work that you do, we do a fun little segment called The Five to Thrive. It's like a game show Perfect. Uh, style where I ask five questions. Each answer is going to be less than 15 seconds each. Are you ready to play? Fire away. The five. All right, question number one was, as a kid, what did you want to be? A rock and roll guitarist. Oh, question number two. What was the most pivotal book that changed the trajectory of your life or career? The first book I ever wrote was 1977 called Whole Person Healthcare. Whole Person Healthcare. Question number three. If I were to give you a mic right now and we were going to do karaoke on stage, what song would you pick? Unbreak My Heart. <laughs> Question number four is, if you were stuck on a desert island and you wanted three people to spend time with you for the rest of your life, what three people, dead or alive, would they be? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I know my wife would pick Mick Jagger, but um, that's not me. You know, I would like... Uh, I like Steve Kerr from the Warriors because I want to talk about leadership and understand what he's doing. I would like Rene Descartes uh, and uh, talking all about logic. And, uh, you know, Steve Sinatra just died. He was a profound leader and trainer in this entire movement. So I'd, I'd bring him back too. Last question for you is how does Dr. Mark Tager want to be remembered? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, I like to think that I gave more than I took, uh, that I was a messenger and I carried these messengers with faith and integrity and love. And the message was really for the recipient, not for my glory. Mm. Now let's dive into the book. Your new book is Feed Your Skin Right. What was the inspiration behind that book? <laughs> you know, for about the last 45 years, I've probably been asked the same four questions. 
What should I eat? What supplements should I take? What topicals should I apply? And what procedure should I have? And uh, everyone wants a quick answer. You know, you get, give me the three foods to eat and the one food not to eat. I do have a simple answer, and it is, it depends. <laughs> now, no one takes that. Sounds like a cop-out answer there. No, Dr. it's David. not. Now, because the book <laughs> is really what it depends upon. It, there's, there's no two people on this planet with the exact same skin. And consequently, not everyone needs the exact same diet. So I think there's been so many great new developments in the science of nutrigenomics and the gut and skin microbiome and food sensitivities that, and even in what we know about the interaction of drugs and nutrients, that information has exploded. And so now there are many ways for people to, to come up with a program that is unique for them. Now, it sounds overwhelming for anybody who's not in the longevity or, or medical space to be thinking about nutrigenomics. How does some everyday regular person come and approach this personalized approach? <laughs> so first, let's start with the middle, with the supplements. Mm. I have a motto mm -hmm. and a saying, Change people it. come Change. to me, you say, oh, Change. what supplement should I take? And the first thing I tell them is, I cannot out-supplement your crappy diet. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at what really has to do, what are the determinants of health, 60% of it is good. Of my advice will be focus on diet, 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 and diet. Then there's a sort of a 20% that supplements, where you, you've got to do intelligent supplementation, and probably 20% on topicals and injectables and things that that work to work from outside in to biostimulate the skin. So diet is everything, and you know, <sighs> this is this is ironic. That you would see the same patient who you would sit with and say, you know, your hemoglobin A1C, which is the sugar attaching to the heme in red blood cells, is up. Well, I'm worried about you getting diabetes, you're pre-diabetic. They say, okay, doc, great. That same patient, when you tell them, you know, when the sugar attaches to the collagen in your skin, mm. that causes fine lines and wrinkles. Oh my goodness, I better cut down on my sugar. So, you know, I think that, that we see people, you know, I think of wellness as this big room yeah. with lots of doors and, and skin health and beauty is a big way that people come into that room. So it sounds like the core of it really is diet, and you're suggesting a diet low in sugar. Are there particular food groups and yeah. types of do, do's and don'ts? You know, have? this is so much simpler than, than we, we make it. First thing is, you know, the food should sort of look like food, and the closest, the closest it looks to its natural state, the better it's going to be for you. Uh, it is not the sad diet, which is devoid of nutrients, which is high in processed foods and sugar and, and unhealthy oils. So that's really the first thing. It's, uh, and then, you know, sugar and um, fats, and for some people, dairy, are the three that sort of kind of combine to affect the skin very significantly. And we, we need to make sure that we cut down, the average American takes in 100 grams of added sugar a day, 100 pounds a year. Oh, this is powerful and for its effects on the skin. We also have issues with the balance of the essential fatty acids that must be supplied in the diet. We have the omega-6s outweighing by far the omega-3s. Yeah. This pushes people towards a, an inflammatory diet and inflammatory pathways. So I think those are important. I think many people are mineral and vitamin deficient. Uh, we don't get enough of vitamin C in our diet. Uh, many people have single nucleotide polymorphisms, genetic variants about how they handle and break down things. The need for zinc, the need for vitamin D is a, is a good one. Uh, we can have two people and you put them on the same regimen and it doesn't move the needle for one of them and the other one, it does. And if they've got SNPs, genetic variants, for how they transport or metabolize the vitamin D, they need many times more vitamin D. I happen to actually be one of those people, and I take significant amounts of vitamin D because I have those two genetic variants, and that gets my vitamin D to where it needs to be. Mm. 
So it sounds like foods, supplements, and let's talk a little bit about the microbiome. You know, a lot of people say there is the gut brain connection, but in fact, really there's, I tell everybody, everything is connected to everything. So there is a gut brain access. There's probably also a gut skin access because everything's connected. So let's talk a little bit about disruptions in the gut microbiome and how that can manifest in sure. the skin. There's the gut brain skin access. There's, it's a triangle. And if you think about it, there's information that is mm -hmm. being shared all the time, both chemically and through the nervous system. So there's this incredible dance that takes place in our bodies. And if we look at the microbiome, first of all, many people have a condition called dysbiosis. Yeah. This episode of the Thrive State podcast is brought to you by the Thrive State Accelerator. The Thrive State Accelerator is actually a home course that I developed using the exact same techniques I work with my celebrity clients, CEOs, and executives on how to get them to the Thrive State. The Thrive State Accelerator teaches you how to master your seven bioenergetic elements. That's sleep, nutrition, movement, stress and emotional mastery, relationships, our thoughts and mindset, as well as purpose. In this Thrive State Accelerator, you're also gonna get a bonus module on optimization. That's how I talk about supplementation, peptides, all the optimization techniques I use with my clients to get them to the Thrive State. Now, for some of you who are just joining us for the first time, you guys might be wondering, what is the Thrive State? Well, the Thrive State is actually the energy the epigenetic environment we give to ourselves, telling ourselves, telling our DNA how to act and how to respond. And if we want optimal health, longevity, and peak performance, if we can master these seven bioenergetic elements, our ability to have those three things that we just said, optimal health, longevity, and peak performance is at its greatest. And it also prevents you from getting chronic symptoms like brain fog, being overweight, feeling sluggish, acne, pain, all these chronic symptoms, as well as preventing you from getting chronic disease. So getting to that thrive state is really getting to that state to master being that very best version of yourself so you could show up for you, for your family, for your business, everything that's important to you. So go ahead, check it out right now at kianbu.com slash accelerator and use coupon code podcast25 for 25% off. Now back to the podcast. And this is just very simply the bad bugs outweigh the good ones. Now, one of the ways you start changing that, first of all, fiber, 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 and fiber. Why? Fiber is the preferred food of the, back, the good bacteria in the gut. When they get that fiber, they make what's called postbiotics, which are short chain fatty acids. Now, we talk a lot about butyrate, which is a kind of short chain fatty acid that stays in the gut and heals the gut lining. But two others, propionate, which mainly affects the liver, and acetate, which goes throughout the body and into the skin, is very important. So if you want great skin, start with fiber. Now, many people would benefit, though, from a spore-based probiotic. And, and I say that because the, the bacteria, the bifido and the lactobacilli, are killed off in the stomach. They don't make it through that harsh stomach environment. So you're getting dead bacteria, which is okay. They still do some things. But spore-based bacillus bacteria, these spores have been around since way before us. And you can, in fact, find them intact in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the remnants 5,000 years ago. So what they do is they go intact through the harsh stomach and go into the, the colon and the distal uh, uh, ileum, and they start waking up the good uh, bacteria like Ackermansia, which is a, a great name, Ackermansia <laughs> Cinephilia. Yeah, I, I wish I could have been the one naming these, <laughs> Ackermansia Cinephilia. Um, Italian. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I make everything Italian, so it's the, only, it's the only action I really like. Questo, questo. So, but the point being is that they, they get these bacteria to start making more uh, acetate, and that acetate goes throughout the body, goes to the skin. So I think the, the other thing is that the microbiome uh, creates, obviously, these bugs, create vitamin K and other hormones, but they create all these neurotransmitters that are essential for well-being. Now, interestingly enough, the 
gut-produced neurotransmitters don't go uh, and cross the blood-brain barrier. What they do is they wake up and tickle the afferent fibers, afferent meaning going to, of the vagus nerve going to the brain. The brain makes adjustments, sends information back down to the gut, to the spleen. When it hits the spleen, it, it works to dampen inflammation by affecting the macrophages and down-regulating some of these harmful proteins, these cytokines that, that uh, regulate inflammation. So there's a, there's a nervous system a component to this that we're really starting to, to understand as well. That's amazing. So we've got fiber and specific probiotics and go for the spore-based. Yeah, spore-based ones. What about yeah. you know, speciation? Is it important to that, that we look for a certain species within the probiotics? You know, uh, again, most of, this, the, most of the probiotics that you're going to take will be destroyed in the stomach. So it's not going, they're not going to do that much. Uh, and then there's the bifido, lacto, is it a billion, is it two billion? You need to get up above two billion um, CFUs uh, to have much of an effect of anything. But, and you know, again, these bacteria, um, they don't colonize the gut. I mean, they're just, when they're there, they're there, and then they pass out. But the spore-based ones really start helping to correct this dysbiosis. So I'm a believer in that. I think there's some other things that people can take. There are other antioxidants that work really well on the skin. Uh, the, all the carotenoids. Well, this is the other thing. The other part about eating fiber, and I'll tell you a story. I'm a New York City boy. I never had a garden. The pandemic hit. I went from traveling 150,000 miles a year to stay at home, and I developed the garden. And every day I go out and talk to my plants and they're all these rich colors. The job of the pigments mm -hmm. in plants, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, is to protect the plant from UV radiation. So you're looking at plants having 5,000 phytonutrients, all, many of whom the primary job is protect against UV damage. So when you eat things that are high in astaxanthin, and zeaxanthin, and lutein, uh, what you're doing is you are actually getting skin protection, UV protection from the inside out. And I think in addition to everything else, obviously these antioxidants you know, work with free radicals, uh, they clean things up uh, and they, they, they fight this oxidative stress that we have. Uh, they also catalyze key reactions in the body. But I think that's a, that's a big piece of it. Another piece, too, is that I think a lot of people are mineral deficient. Certainly, we know this in vitamin D. I mean, 94% yeah. of people just don't even get the estimated average requirement uh, that's necessary for just being average. And, and we see that in, in some of these other minerals. So I think that's another piece. And it makes sense. Minerals aren't in the soil. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just not there. Including diet, and what I'm also hearing, reduce sugar, go off the standard American diet, which sure. is a sad diet. Eat the colors of the rainbow because yes. you want those uh, phytonutrients. Uh, and then probiotics. When do you think somebody should look into deeper testing to figure out what's going on yeah. inside? That, that's a great question. Um, because these tests are expensive. Yep. They are not, for the most part, covered by insurance. Um, and it depends what your objectives are. Now, if, for the, and, and as practitioners, we know that 80, 90% of the folks, we're gonna do the same thing for them. We're gonna heal their gut with certain nutrients. We're gonna get them to cut down on inflammatory things. We're going to give them things that, that, that boost their immune system. So we're probably 70 to 80% 90% some of our treatments going to be the same. But it's the person that stuff just doesn't seem to be working for that individual. It's, and, and, and you want to pursue that further. Now, I, I think the nutrigenomics piece is, is exciting. Uh, but again, I, I think about skin. You can learn about uh, your tendencies to glycation and pigmentation, the extent to which you uh, get your MMPs, your, your breaking down collagen, um, all of that. You can look at whether, whether you 
need more or less of a certain nutrient. So I think that's an important piece, it's certainly worth doing. Um, then when you get into the gut, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the whole genome sequencing versus 16S. 16S is just a shotgun. It just tells you about bacteria. It doesn't tell you about the metabolites. Mm. And that's what we need to know about. Nor does it inform you about uh, things like viruses and fungi in, 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 in the gut. So I think that's an interesting piece as well that can kind of help you find to then you're into all of these GI tests, of which there are any number of them. And then it's, uh, you know, there are organic acids, there are other metabolite tests. So I think that that's a pathway that can inform, but you really need to work with a practitioner who knows what they're doing in there. And then finally, there's uh, food sensitivity testing. Uh, so vitamin E, uh, <laughs> um, IgE, which is true food allergy, you pretty well know that. If you've got a peanut allergy, you know, you, you're right. keeping away from peanuts because your throat's going to close up. But it's the IgG, the delayed reactions that are interesting. And, and there are some good tests for that. Uh, that can help sort of steer people away or towards certain foods. Now, the problem is with all the consumer testing, sometimes people will go and say, oh my goodness, look, I did this test. I'm allergic to everything. I can't eat anything. I can drink water and, and air. Right. And, and, uh, <laughs> and usually those are the folks with really bad leaky gut who they just need work on the leaky gut. By the way, there's leaky skin as well. So, uh, you know, just, just like you have tight, you want to have tight barrier junctions in the gut, same with the skin. Otherwise, water evaporates uh, and bad things can get into the skin. And, you know, beyond that and underneath all that, I'm, I'm, I'm also assuming good sleep and stress reduction would yeah. be great for the skin. So sleep for sure. I mean, you need your seven hours is, is and, and there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, what takes place at, at sleep time, I like to think of it as it's when the nighttime gardener, the, the nighttime gardeners come out. And they're kind of pruning away little dead neurons and they're sweeping up the debris that the, that the, the cells created. And it is essentially a time when you're really getting autophagy, your, your housekeeping. So I, I think sleep, and certainly we know that if you don't get enough sleep, you're putting these harmful inflammatory cytokines into your system. So good sleep, absolutely critical. And stress management, you know, years ago I wrote a book called Transforming Stress into Power. And uh, it, it, it is really interesting to be able to exert control of the workings of your autonomic nervous system. So you're sitting here right now, your, your brains, you don't have to say, heart, please be. Skin, regulate my temperature. You don't have to do any of that. But the only part of, of the autonomic nervous system that you can control is that part of the parasympathetic system. It has to do with your breathing. And I, 50 years ago, I wrote, that you know, breathing is first aid for stress. And it really is. Because you know, particularly, I, I advocate the in four, hold for seven, out for eight. You only do that about three times. But it's so profound. And the most profound part that most people don't understand is the prolonged exhalation. Because it is on the prolonged exhalation when you activate the parasympathetic fibers, you stretch the lungs, and you've got, this is where you get more heart rate variability uh, because of uh, the way the blood system, blood flow is going. And, and that's the important piece. So there's certainly that. Awesome. I suggest if you are concerned about your skin at all, you want great skin, pick up his new book. Where do people find the book? Feed Your Skin Right, Amazon. Bless Amazon. They get it to you faster than I can ever get it to you. And then uh, my handles are at DRM Tager, and my personal site is drtager.com. Last question for you, what has been your best medicine? Uh, married to an amazing woman for 38 years who is as beautiful on the inside as she, she is on the outside. Love. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, Dr. Mark. I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Thrive State Podcast. 
And if this podcast is bringing a lot of value to you, if you find that your life is just improving with this podcast, that your life is getting to the next level, please consider supporting it. And here's a few ways you can do so. You can do so by liking this video and commenting on this video and also sharing this video with your friends and family. Another thing you can do is go to ratethispodcast.com slash ThriveState. Go ahead and leave us a five-star review there. It will really, really help this show grow. And it, this will give me more time so that I could actually give more content to you just like you got in this episode. And if you haven't already picked up a copy of my book, Thrive State, your blueprint for optimal health, longevity, and peak performance. You can pick it up now. It became a number one new release in longevity. Go to thrivestatebook.com. And if you enjoy the book, please consider leaving us a review as well. And the last thing you can do if you're liking everything here and you want to work uh, more closely with me as well as my team to get you into the Thrive State, Go to kianvu.com slash accelerator and consider joining the home course, the Thrive State Accelerator. It's really the course that I use. It's the concepts that I use personally when I work with CEOs, celebrities, and my high profile clients to get them to the Thrive State. Again, the Thrive State Accelerator at kianvu.com slash accelerator. And because you're a listener of this podcast, I want you to save 25% by using the coupon code podcast25. I hope we continue to give value to you. And remember always, you are your best medicine. <laughs>